Hello and welcome back to the Fish Locker out on the coast. Now you can really tell that the seasons are changing. Not only because of the conditions that are behind me now, but the bracken's all turning. It almost seemed to happen overnight. One minute it was all plush green and the next minute just boom. The fox gloves are pretty much all finished. Bracken's all dying away and we have a little bit of mist. Somewhere behind me there is a Cornish landmark but you can barely see it. And another sign is this. Just fruits everywhere. I might look at picking some brambles, these are elderberry. I might look at picking some brambles on the way back. But yeah, uh, elderberry wine comes from these, or elderflower. There are an awful lot of, looking on the, on the brambles, there are an awful lot of snails. Everywhere you look. There's a nice, and if you can see that, that one's purple. But those are called a banded snail, and it's actually on top of just a normal garden snail. So there look. I wonder if it's because they've been eating brambles. They're a little bit pink aren't they? I wonder if it's because they've been eating brambles. There's another one there look. A banded snail. You do get some of them every now and again that are like bright yellow. See when I'll show you. But yeah. Hopefully the mist will lift and we're going to make our way down and around the coast. If it doesn't lift <laughs> it's going to be a, not an awful lot to see in this video. So, fingers crossed. This you can see behind me here is the Wheel Prosper Tin and Copper Mine. Now you might recognise it from things like Poldark, because I think it has been in one of those. But um, this type of mine is synonymous with Cornwall. It's getting quite difficult doing it this way around, I'm not used to looking this way. Um, 1860 around about that time it was uh, it was in action it wasn't in <laughs> wasn't incredibly prosperous I think considering its name will prosper I didn't think it did very well at all but yeah that's the uh, that's the pump house that's still left there I'm gonna switch this around the other way there we go. impressive isn't it Like I said, this is the Wheel Prosper mine. It was a live mine in the 1860s. I think it was for maybe five or six years, and it was um, they were hoping to mine tin and copper. The stone, actually, to build this built this pump house that you can see behind me, was quarried from the hills behind. So it really was local materials. I think that they had um, I think they had three shafts at one point, and the deepest of which was 460 feet. And the steam pump, the steam engine that was inside of this building here, was used to pump the water out of the shafts. I think it's a lovely looking building. It's a rare house down there, isn't it? You're looking down into Mounts Bay on this side, towards Penzance and Land's End. And then back this way you're looking, going towards the Lizard. So. We have other videos, we have some videos from Mullion, which is on that side, and I'll tag it in here. And then we also have some videos from down that end of the country, and I'll tag them in later. It's a lovely time of day to be out, isn't it? Even the heathers have started to die back. Have you noticed that uh, any of the growth, like the gorse and everything, and even when you get bushes, never grows very high, does it? Because you've got, not only have you got the wind running up this way, but the soil's only probably really shallow. See how stony it is, can't you? There are actually still a couple of flowers still around. 
these ones here that you can see are sea campions the sea thrifts or the sea pinks have had their time haven't they there's some more sea campions and sea carrot there now one of the viewers asked me if this is the same as Queen Anne's Lace so that's actually another name for the same plant from their area and there are loads of lichens pretty much on all of the open rocks pretty much on all of the open rocks on the coast of Cornwall there'll be some form of lichen it shows really good air quality I've covered this in one of my um, one of my other coastal exploring videos but there are uh, three main types of lichen crustos, fruticos, folios crustos creates like a crust Fruticose has like branches and folios has like leaves. So like here look. Right. You see these how they have like branches on it. That's fruticose. And you see this where it creates like a crust. That's crustose. Oh that's stone crop, right? If I can find some of the, uh, the folios, I'll show you that later. Yeah, there's always loads to see. All of these were sea carrot that's all past their best. There's a good example of some of the Crustos, fruticos. It's a lovely area of coastline, this isn't it? One of the fascinating things that I think about, I mean, I find it fascinating. Is, uh, like these rocks, this granite rock is that hard that it just does not change. So you look at the, I mean, you look at a lifetime. If you live 80 years, these rocks here probably haven't changed in a thousand years. Like when the Vikings were coming past, or like when the Romans were coming, out, all of that, these rocks, that, these headlands probably looked almost exactly the same makes you feel a little bit insignificant doesn't it like a speck on the face of the earth let's carry on going I was looking at the clarity it is good wrasse fishing down here that beach there at one point in time we were here in summer and that was full of sand all the sand's been moved off by the bad weather. We have a look. I have got my wetsuit in the van, but the clarity down here just looks like it's been stirred up too much. I'll have a look around the corner and see what it's like. On some of these little outcrops, show you, just double back and show you this little spot. Needless to say, you need to be careful when you're doing this. There are some little patches here. People who watch a few of my videos might immediately recognise that. There's been rock samphire. When you break it, it smells really fresh, almost like pine. There it is there, look.
really hardy plant. Find it a lot in areas of course like this. That gives you a better view there in the distance down that way, Penzance. And there, if you look back, there's Porth Levin, and there is the lizard. The water does look quite nice down here. Deep. Go around here for maybe another half a mile. See about doubling back and we'll go and get the suit. People who've watched my coastal exploring video down on down on Sen and down at Land's End will know about a bird called a chuff, a Cornish chuff. It's basically like a slender crow, like a long red beak. And there's a pair of they are quite rare. There's a pair of them in the field just up here. They have a really distinctive call. Now I don't know how close I'm going to be able to get to them. You might not even be able to see them. But Can you hear the really distinctive sound? I don't know how close I'll be able to zoom the video in, but yeah. There is a pair of Cornish chuff. I like buses, I hadn't seen any for ages and I've seen quite a few this year. And here is Wheel True Evers. Now <laughs> anybody local is probably howling at the way that I'm butchering saying this. True Evers, True Evers. I'll put the name in here and it's however it's spelled. Yeah. There and there. Now I was doing a little bit of reading about this place. There was three shafts. One of them that went out 600 feet diagonally under the sea. And legend even has it that there was, as with mining back then, there were accidents from time to time and it did get flooded, there were fatalities. But uh, there were reports that the men when they were in the mine underneath the, underneath the sea could hear the big rocks being moved around by the sea, could hear the rocks cracking. See if we can have a closer look. There's actually a pair of chuffs down there on the cliff as well. I could sit here all day, it's absolutely lovely. What is it? 
could easily sit here all day, couldn't you? Should be out in boat, really. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I am going to try it with a suit. The water does look a little bit murky, just because it's been all stirred up. But I will head back, and I'll see about getting my wetsuit out, and we'll go for a little bit of a swim along the coast. Yeah. I've thought about this a few times. You know, I've mentioned in previous videos and other times before, that it's, it's the simple things in life that make you happy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely, it's finding a passion. I think everybody in life, throughout their life, should have a passion, whatever it is. It doesn't matter whether it's football, whether it's fishing, whether it's painting, whether it's stamp collecting, should have a passion. They have something that gives them joy. I think it's one of the things that I learned going through life, meeting, meeting ever so many different people, and it was that the people who were the happiest consistently were the ones that took pleasure from the easiest and the simplest things in life. Doesn't mean that you don't have to have aspirations. Doesn't mean that you don't have to have goals or be competitive or, or want to succeed. It's not like settling. It's just finding joy and filling your life with it. my two pennies anyway. <sighs> Tell you what, I'm sweating now carrying all that gear down there. There's my gear. I do just love these rocks. They are fantastic. It's almost like like dough or something like that, isn't it? Yeah, let's see about getting changed. I'm not getting too bad at that now. Wow. Let's go and get wet. Immediately you can see how strong the current was here. And like I'd said earlier in the video, the water had been stirred up quite a bit. Lots of huge granite boulders gave me plenty to explore. This would be the first of many pieces of fishing tackle I found on this drive. Any disturbance or breaking around I did, there was always a watchful ballon ras nearby looking for any small edibles. I had a great time hiding in the kelp watching them. Female spider crab scratching about in the mussels. And a very camouflaged little one. With a watchful rust nearby. On this outcrop, I found some stunning dahlias and enemies. What a jackpot! I have never seen so many of these beautiful dahlia and enemies in one place, and so vivid. They have got to be worth another look. Here is a special little starfish, actually called a bloody henry, a shy little sea scorpion. I 
and another stunning bloody henry look at the colour difference between these two both of the same species and a nice bass amongst the juvenile pollock Lots of small pollock today, no really big ones though. A few more curious wrasse. And a sneaky spider crab hiding away. There were some fantastic caverns carved out by the current and the rolling rocks. Perfect hiding places for big wrasse. That's not all that was in this cave though. A little pouting and a bruiser of a lobster. He was very curious, but stayed just out of reach. This crevice was packed with velvet swimming crabs, and even an edible crab right at the back. One more spider crab for good measure. Right, well I've made it out of the water. Whoa. A little water in one of my ears. Probably be about two pints worth. Yeah, I've made it out of the water. Uh, loads of wrasse. There's just that much current round there though, that unless it's clung to the rock or it's right tucked inside. There was loads of starfish, some stunning starfish. Loads of, of massive anemones. I've never seen so many of that type in one place before. Uh, saw some bass, saw some pollock. Found an absolutely ginormous lobster. And I mean, it was a monster. It was like, its claws were not well, that big. Uh, right at the back of a cave. It did come out a little bit. I hope, I hope it's shown up because it was a dark cave. I hope it's shown up on the camera. Uh, I had a little try for him just to have a look at him. But um, yeah, it was too hard to get out. I couldn't have eaten him anyway just because he was too big. What I did find a lot of, and look at this how you will, is a lot of fishing gear. Look, this is just what I've picked up. But all these leads alone, I did find a few, I did find a few strings of feathers that were all just all snarled up in the seaweeds but I just couldn't get them out and uh, all the hook I didn't want to risk getting hooks stuck in me and, yeah so what I could pull out I pulled out but um, yeah I've got some leads for the boat there now um, no, I'm sorry my mouth's real dry <laughs> it's all the salt water yeah I'll, I'll get changed real quick and then we'll make our way back up and uh, I might see about picking some brambles we'll see what we'll see what we're doing for time but yeah that was um, that was a lovely little dive. The current was real strong though, and because of it, like I said before, that when we've had, we've had weather in this direction, it stirred all the water up, so it was a bit milky. We'll see how the footage is. <laughs> oh, tell you what, it doesn't help that I've got like an extra three pound of lead now. <laughs> Love what you do. I'm not going to lie, I'm taking a breather on the way back up. Not only have I got all my wet gear and my weight belt, but I've got like an extra three pound of lead in my bag. <laughs> it is a lovely bit of coast, isn't it? Just a stunning memory of coast. I hope you enjoyed joining me for my walk this morning. A lovely little walk at that time of day. I hope the footage from the dive has been all right. Saw some lovely creatures today. I will put the names of the species in on the video because people have said that they find that helpful. 
um, I hope you've enjoyed the video if you did please give it a like subscribe to the channel and make sure that you tick the notification box for all notifications that way you don't miss when our next video comes out if you think that your friends might enjoy the channel please share it on the more the merrier if I find anything else on the way back up I will show you if I don't then I won't in the meantime all the best see you later I couldn't resist Bit purple now, like. <laughs>